Good morning. It's great to see everyone here. I want to thank uh, Sheila Huddle from the Green Patriot Working Group and Stacy Malkin, who isn't here today, but uh, from the Campaign for Safe Cosmetics, because without their help, um, none of this would have happened. And I mean, not only the press conference, but all the changes that are occurring in the natural products industry and in the mainstream industry, <laughs> led by the natural products industry. So thank you, Stacy and Sheila, um, for, for all the great work you've done. Um, uh, I have some really good news today. I have some bad news, and I have some more good news. So we're gonna uh, we have a, we have some good things to talk about today, and some disturbing things. In the state of California, dioxane is is known as a pro, as a hu probable human carcinogen, and it's on the Proposition 65 list. And that means that if the levels are too high, the company ha companies have to warn consumers. Uh, that this is contained in their products and give them that warning so they can buy it or not buy it based on, on that information. Environmental Protection Agency has revised its potency for dioxane and found that it's a much more potent carcinogen than previously believed. Um, as a result, um, the levels in products are of even more concern. And not only that, but dioxane um, most recently in 2009 was shown to ca cause benign breast tumors in experimental studies in both male and female um, animals, rodents. Um, this year we also studied laundry detergents and um, we did a very um, informal market survey and by that I mean we just went to the supermarket and we bought products um, and we measured the uh, levels of dioxane in detergents and the information that we found out about detergents was very um, disconcerting and disturbing and I want to talk about that because this affects everyone in throughout the United States, but particularly in California and areas where water resources um, are noted for being in short supply. Um, we found that two thirds of all laundry detergents that we tested contain dioxane. And some of the levels we found were pretty high. Um, and we were surprised at how high they were. And consumers, again, need to know this. I'll, I'm going to give you a little shopping survey now um, so that we can uh, just give you, uh, let me give you a shopping survey because uh, consumers want to know. Consumers want to know. Um, we tested Tide, one of the most popular brands of laundry detergent today in the United States. It had 55 parts per million dioxane. Now, um, you know, we've raised concerns about five and ten parts per million in shampoo products. This is 55 parts per million. We then tested um, ivory snow. Again, you know, pure as the driven snow, not quite. <laughs> 31 parts per million, you know. Um, we then tested Tide free and clear. Well, it may be free of artificial colors or it may be free of uh, whatever it is that they claim they're free of but it's not free of dioxane. It tested at uh, 29 parts per million. So, you know, and consumers are buying these products with monikers like free and clear and thinking that somehow, you know, it, it must be purer or have less problematic ingredients, but it didn't, 29 parts per million. We then tested Purex from Dial Corporation, 25 parts per million. We tested Gain Ultra, ultra high in dioxane, 21 parts per million. We tested all, or cheer, excuse me. We tested cheer, 20 parts per million. We tested uh, ERA, uh, 14 parts per million for ERA. <coughs> I hope shoppers are listening to this nationwide because this is good information to know. You know, this is. We deserve to know this, and it's not being listed on the label, but this had 14 parts per million, era. Um, Arm and Hammer from Church and Dwight, five parts per million. You know, again, these are products that we're all using, and I think the question you have to start to ask is, with millions and millions of people using these every day, how much of this is going into our wastewater, and then ultimately back into our drinking water? And I want to explain that scenario to you, because that's really what's at stake here. Um, <coughs> whisk, 3.9 parts per million. You know? uh, <coughs> wool 
whole life. Again, soft and gentle, but 1.3 parts per million. All laundry detergent from Unilever, 0.6 parts per million. Well, the only products that tested undetectable among mainstream brands was Draft, a powder, and yet powders are very bad for our water supplies because they tend to have a lot of uh, phosphates and other and sodium salts, which, make up, which makes our, our water unrecyclable. So we have to get away from powders. But it did test non-detectable. Lastly, um, Sun Brands uh, tested non-detectable. But these were the only two brands that in the mainstream area that tested non-detectable. Now, the reason why this is important, particularly in the state of California, is, and then I want to show you good alternatives too. The reason why this is important in the state of California is that we recharge our groundwater supplies because we're in a drought area with recycled wastewater. So we asked Thomas Moore, who is one of the leading experts on dioxane and wastewater to explain the scenario about how dioxane could get into our drinking water supplies. Thomas Moore is the author of Environmental Investigation and Remediation, 1,4-Dioxane and Other Solvent Stabilizers from the CRC Press, 2010. He's a hydrogeologist with a large California water supply agency. And he pointed out dioxane begins its journey when consumers use products containing it as a byproduct, such as shampoo, laundry detergent, liquid dishwashing detergent, and liquid laundry soaps. The wastewater all combines as it leaves the home and enters the sewer line. Once in the sewer, it's unlikely to be biodegraded in spite of the substantial amount of microbiological activity in sewer lines. It's de resistant to biodegradation and it's likely to arrive at the wastewater plant unabated. Um, it's not removed by conventional water treatment processes. So you can't just filter this out. Um, that's, that's the bad news. Um, but there's also really good news too, and, and I want to talk about that for a minute. Um, we also tested products from the natural uh, products industry. And again, we just went into supermarkets and bought them, and um, we found that the natural products industry has done a great job. They are the saviors and the leaders now when it comes to laundry detergents. Um, the pricing is, is equivalent, but the products are superior, and we, we, I want to point out why that is. We went into the supermarket, for example, and we bought, uh, <coughs> this is called Ecos from Earth Friendly Products. And the, um, among things which you'll notice is there are no dyes, it's perfectly clear. Um, this product came out truly as clean as the driven snow. Nothing in it that would be harmful. No sodium salts, no phosphates, no formaldehyde. None of the troubling ingredients that we have found from our other studies are in this product. It's the same price and it works just as well. Why would a consumer not buy this, particularly in a state like California or in Washington state w where there is so much water and when you pollute your water supplies it goes into all the water just because the, it's very immersible. It just docks and stays in the water, it travels with the water. But this product came out completely free. This would be a much better choice for consumers. I should mention these two products um, are by far the most superior products that we found, and there's a reason for that. Um, um, the reason is they're widely available. It's easy to make the right choice. You know, they're in supermarkets, they're in health food stores. It's easy. If a product is not readily available, of course, then the consumer has to work too hard. But these products are there for everyone to make that purchase, and the pricing is the same. The point is that the consumer now has this information. Uh, we'll post it on YouTube. We'll post it everywhere we can. And empowered by this information, you know, we can make better choices here in California for our drinking water supplies. And this is really important. I can't stress it enough.